<laughs> now, there is a story that, that I've read that, that the two of you with your husband are in London, perhaps, having a meal, perhaps, and you're talking about how you might collaborate because A Doll's House, a film you were going to make together, was gone by the wayside. And someone, your husband, said, how about streetcar? Silence. You think for a moment and you're fearful because this is a tough role. And you say... My heart jumped of happiness and I know I really became red in my face of, of real eagerness to do this because if there is a perfect lunch that I would know of, it would be her. And then I think this was also something that, that you wanted to do very, very much. And we had been silent for a while and talked about Ibsen and right. things, and mm. suddenly this came and, and, and we became alive, all three of us. And that same evening, your husband just gave me the book. He went to buy it, although he had a premiere himself in, in London. He, mm. I mean, it's a, it's a gift of a, um, of a play, really. And I think it's what's been remarkable about, I mean, it's often I think projects choose you in a way rather than you choosing the project, not to get too sort of metaphysical about it. But because he's been so influenced by Chekhov, and, you know, Chekhov was obviously one of his fa fa um, favourite writers, you feel like you're doing Tennessee Williams and Chekhov and Ibsen, and you're doing the Greeks, because he references all of those, you know, wonderful um, forms of, of, of theatre. And I think that that's what Liv has really unlocked, is that it's, it's very um, easy to make this play very camp or uh, very melodramatic, but you've got to find a balance between all of those things and um, to bring out the, the human humour in it, which I think you've really, you've really done. It's a gift. It's an absolute gift. Were you for a moment scared of playing Blanche? Terrified. Utterly terrified. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, I think there are very few... Um, theatrical works, very few plays which exist as absolutely in um, the world of cinema as they do in the theatrical world. And this is a masterpiece in, in both works and, and um, like as Anne's work is, was clearly groundbreaking but also the performances that were elicited in, in that. Uh, the, I think it's a play uh, that we all feel we know perhaps better than we really do because we, it exists in the shadow of the film. And so I think part of our job mm. was really, and that's where Liv was fearless, is to actually set that aside and just really to examine what was there on the page. And you didn't watch the film? No, I mean, obviously I'd seen it many, many times. And, um, you know, I, I, will, I voraciously will take up any references. I'll, I'll sort of <laughs> take anybody else's No, but you didn't do it because you'd already seen it or you <clears> didn't do it because you didn't want to see it at that time? Um, I, I, I thought part of the task was to to not be influenced by the film. And I think because it's somehow seeped into popular culture, I mean, even people who haven't seen the play still know Stella, they still know all yeah. they, And there's so many lines, the kindest of strangers being the most obvious ones, but there's so many lines that have been pulled out and, and into common parlance. So in a way, it's seeped into our bones. And so mm. I, I sort of feel like it, it was there as a reference point anyway.